Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and positive out there. Guys, Ripple is up today. We are very, very close to the end of this stupid lawsuit. It's incredibly bullish. And also Stellar XLM is up today as well. We've got some updates in relation to obviously Ethereum here, guys. The SEC has gone absolutely mad with power. I shouldn't say the SEC, it's mainly Gensler. He's gone mad with power. Anyway, we're going to go through everything. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Let's get straight into it. Cheers, everyone. Here's my espresso. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you are new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom, and yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. It's been insane so far and we are just getting started. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, watch it straight through. It would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people because the YouTube algorithm is absolute magic when you find ladies and gentlemen do that, all right? So give it a good old thumbs up. It doesn't cost you anything. It is down there. It's absolutely free. Smash that thumbs up button, all right? You guys rock. Also, little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff. I do not want to see anyone get financially hurt. That is why my number one golden rule is I only invest what I can afford to lose. And yes, we don't like to lose. You can lose money like that in the blink of an eye in crypto, all right? So please be careful out there. Do your own research and due diligence. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the formalities are out of the way. Let's go straight to the community tab. I am going to have a sip of my espresso. There you go, guys. All right. Now, breaking. NASDAQ to offer Bitcoin custody services to institutions. Big money is coming. We are before the institutions. I just want to make that very clear. We are very early in this space. All right. And uh, let's go down to my altcoins that we're up on in my portfolio. We have, of course, had XRP, Stellar XLM, Algorand, Solo as well, and CKB, which is Nervous Network. XRP is up. This is nothing, guys. I keep talking about it, but guys, this is nothing. Wait till this case is over. How much mainstream media is going to be talking about XRP and Ripple? What do you think is going to happen with this crypto once it's released back on all the exchanges in the United States? There's going to be so much FOMO into it. It's going to be mental. Anyway, let's go to CoinSpot. Check up on the crypto prices here in Australia. I use CoinSpot. This is where I buy my cryptos in Australia. Please feel free to use the referral link below. You will get $10 in Bitcoin. Of course, do your own research and due diligence. Australian dollars, everything else is set to USD. Now, Bitcoin sitting at $28,000 today. It has been trading sideways for weeks, weeks at this level. All right. And I don't think we're going to be dropping much lower than this, but you know, we're just getting started, man. Honestly, we are. I think we're on the, the the cusp of something, you know, moving into a massive bull run. All right. Ethereum's at $2,000 down 3% as well. Again, I did throw $1,000 into Ethereum. I am staking it as well. There's some interesting stuff coming out from the SEC, guys, in relation to that. It's just mental. Anyway, the guy's a nutcase. Anyway, XRP's up 8% as well, 63 cents which is really nice as well. And it's nice to see this moving ahead of the entire crypto market today. Finally, to see XRP in the green. Now, Cardano's at 67 cents. You got Doge at 8 cents. Polkadot's at $9. That is a bargain. Uh, Maddox at $1.12 today. Let's go down to Link at $10. Near Protocol's at $5. Stellar is at 18 cents. Algorand is up 4% to 50 cents as well. Moving down to VeChain at 3 cents. Still an undervalued gem. Of course, we've got Hedera at eight cents as well. Mana Sandbox at dollar eight and a dollar twenty nine. Quant is at one hundred and fifty six dollars. This was up like to one hundred and sixty dollars yesterday. So, really good buying opportunities. Um, excuse me, it's the coffee. <laughs> anyway, Aave is one hundred and fourteen. Theta is at dollar fifty nine. Axie Infinity is at eighteen dollars. I am staking that, earning seventy eight percent APY per year. It's just mental, all right? I'm earning some ridiculous money every single day from that. Not financial advice. But the only downside is the fact that the cryptocurrency is going down in value. So it doesn't really help, does it? But it's still insane returns. Anyway, IOTA's at 40 cents. You've got the graph at 14 cents. NEO's at $12. Moving down some other favorites of mine. Waves at $6 as well. 
Keep moving down to some other favorites. Of course, you've got XDC, which has flipped, uh, obviously, Gala Games at $0.04. Cents. Gala's at $0.06 cents as well. Rose at $0.08. Cents. And, of course, again, Reef. I'm very bullish on this. Under a cent. It is a gem. Long-term hold. This will be in the double digits, 10 to $15 in the future. I've seen some pretty crazy stuff. Now, XYO, I'm very bullish on at one cent as well. And Alliance Block, ALBT is the ticker uh, at six cents. So Alliance Block as well. Now, let me know in the comments below if you have any other gems. And uh, on CoinSpot as well, if I go to the gainers today, these are all the gainers on CoinSpot just showing. Uh, and obviously, it's nice to see XRP up there as well. You've got Helium up as well, Voyager token. Uh, WIRX as well, and Ellipsis X. Don't know anything about that coin, but that is one up there, guys. Library credits and MDX. I have no idea what these ones do. Of course, Stellar. Bullish as anything. Now, let's go to Crypto Bubbles. Now, before I do that, guys, yes, this is the Wall Street Bull. I did put a Crypto widget up there as well. Full Nerd Burger. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I did have to code that in. Um, so again, pretty cool stuff. I'm pretty happy with my coding there. Um, anyways, so let's go here. Official merchandise. Go grab yourself some pretty cool stuff. I've got Hadera to the moon. Hadera Men's Premium Tees right here. The ISO 222 T-shirt. Ripple NASA logo sweatshirt right here. I've got the Wall Street Bull caps as well. Go grab yourself some stuff, guys. Use the discount code Moon10. Really awesome quality as well. Now let's go to Crypto Bubbles. Now, let me refresh this as well. And it's really nice to see XRP in the green today. Finally, it's really nice, guys. I like seeing it in XLM, of course. But um, XRP, 7.5% on the day, 24% on the week, 20% on the month. All right? And if I go to all time, $1.26, we will, we will fly past this, guys. We really will. All right? $0.41 cents at the moment is an absolute bargain. Bullish news coming out from Ripple. Just It's just one thing after another with these guys, even though this stupid lawsuit is going on. And it is due to end, in my opinion, in November because, you know, the, the migration's happening to the new financial messaging system, which we know that Ripple's not only just going after the messages, but the transfer of funds as well. And of course, we've got XLM up 4.9% on the day, 12% on the week, 6.9% on the month, currently trading at 39 cents as well. Uh, sorry, was its all-time high and seven, 11 cents, sorry, uh, at the moment, USD. So incredibly bullish. Helium as well, up 7.5% on the day, 11% on the week. Was trading at $53, guys. Now, trading at $4 USD, that's incredibly cheap as well. Now, moving on to some news. We've got some big moves coming in again. 50 million XRP to an Anon wallet. Uh, here's what means for the market right here, guys. So this is happening quite often all right more regularly this is happening so according to the data shared by whale stats platform which traces large transactions of crypto over the past 24 hours a total of nearly 582 million xrp has been moved this includes ripple sending 50 million xrp five hours ago as per the aforementioned source the ripple giant transferred 50 million xrp to an, a, a wallet that whale alert tagged as an anonymous one right here which is very interesting but we know that, you know, XRP's holding, oh, sorry, Ripple's holding a massive escrow account because it's for the institutions. The institutions are going to go to them directly to buy XRP. We know this, all right? They're going to go direct. They're not going to buy it on the open market. They're going to go direct to Ripple, and that's where they're going to buy their XRP from for the use of cross-border payments, all right? Now, obviously, we've got here, guys, what to expect from the CFTC's commissioners meeting with Brad Garlinghouse, that's incredibly bullish. And uh, the UFCFTC, the US, sorry, CFTC Commissioner Caroline Pham next Brad, uh, met Brad Garlinghouse ahead of the court decision that could affect how regulators handle XRP. Pham listed her visit to Ripple as part of her learning tour in crypto and blockchain. Analysts predict a 50% rally in Ripple as XRP holders witnessed double digit gains overnight. That is nothing. We're going to be experiencing triple quadruple um, X gains, all right, when this thing gets uh, finally over and done with, all right? So the meeting with the U.S. Commodity and Futures, Futures Trading Commissioner, Carolyn Pham and Ripple, CEO Bray Garlinghouse has massively influenced the sentiment among XRP holders. XRP price rallied 10% overnight as XRP holders anticipated a favorable outcome in the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. And that is Caroline right there with Brad, the legend. Some people say... The man should have worn a tie. I don't think so. I think he's more calm and relaxed. Wearing a tie is very corporate. I'm just saying, you know, 
good on him. He seems very happy as well. Um, so we could see some pretty positive moves here, guys. So keep an eye on this. Why would the CFTC commissioner be visiting Ripple's offices? Because there's a result coming. We know this. Now, moving on, guys, again, the SEC make one garling, or glaring mistake in the recent filing for summary judgment. And go read that as well, by the way. Prominent XRP supporting lawyer Johnny Deaton, the legend, says that the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission made a major misstep in the recent filing for summary judgment in its lawsuit against Ripple Labs. The SEC sued Ripple again in 2020 under allegations that the payments firm issued XRPs at unregistered security. And now both parties have filed for summary judgment, which is a request to end a court case without a full trial. Deaton, who represents 70,000 legends, holders, obviously, of XRP in a court case, tells his 214,000 Twitter followers, the SEC's motion for summary judgment contains no references from any experts making the case that XRP behaves as a security by relying on efforts of Ripple for its performance. What, without a doubt, is most glaring, the missing from, missing from the SEC's motion summary judgment, the SEC does not rely on a single expert. There is no SEC expert testimony from the SEC attempting to prove the price correlation between the efforts of Ripple and the price of XRP. There is no SEC expert testimony claiming XRP holders relied on expertise, skill, or management of the Ripple team, or expert testimony claiming XRP holders were led by promises uh, and inducements made by Ripple before acquiring XRP. Deaton also says the SEC makes no attempt to argue that the XRP ledger, the blockchain that XRP native to, has anything to do with Ripple. Some have taken the filings as a hint that the settlement might be around the corner. Other legal experts have predicted that one could some uh, sorry one could come sometime in November. And Deaton, however, has uh, his, his doubts saying that the filings aren't necessarily a sign that the end is near, the lawsuit near, or the end of the lawsuit is near. Many are asking about the settlement in the Ripple case. Some take everything they view as unusual, uh, as a sign of settlement. I don't know what's going to happen to you guys. All I know is that November is coming very quickly, and we know that ISO 222 is going live around the world as well. That is starting. So could this be in conjunction with that? We will see. Now, Lizard Man is back. He's back with a vengeance. This dude. Anyway, SEC claims all of Ethereum falls under the US jurisdiction. <sighs> Far out. So in a civil complaint against the crypto influencer, the SEC suggested that it believes the US government has jurisdiction over all Ethereum transactions. Well, could we see this coming? Anyway, so the SEC filed a federal lawsuit on Monday against crypto influencer Ian Bellina for his failure to register a cryptocurrency as a security before launching in 2018, initial coin offering and ICO. Everything at first appeared run of the mill. The SEC has for years filed civil suits against individuals and organizations for rolling out unregistered ICOs. Eagle-eyed observers then read a little further into the fine print. In a bold, potentially unprecedented move buried in a lawsuit in the 69th paragraph, the SEC today claimed it had the right to sue Bellina not only because of the case concerns transactions made in the United States, but also because essentially the entire Ethereum network falls under the US government's purview. What is going on with this dude, man? Look at him. There you go. This man hindering all of crypto innovation in the United States. Uh, and again, I'm quite thankful for now that we don't have someone like this destroying innovation in Australia. All right, but it's coming. We know this, all right? And also get your cryptos off exchanges. I don't know how many times I've got to tell you. Anyway, so SEC charges crypto influencers again. That is what we just read. Michael Saylor has bought another 300 Bitcoins. All right, he's bought the dip which is insane, right? So on as of September 19th, MicroStrategy, together with its sundry, subsidiaries right here, held an aggregate of approximately 130,000 Bitcoins, which were acquired, were acquired at an aggregate purchase price of $3.98 billion at an average purchase price of approximately $30,000 per Bitcoin, inclusive of fees and expenses. Guys, it's crazy right now, man. He's, he's bought at an average of $30,000, so he's taken a massive hit to his Bitcoin. But, you know, he obviously is bullish on it and so be it, man. He's an institution. That's whatever. Good on him. I'm happy. 
I'm happy for people to make money. Now, XRP right there is the number one. Look at that, guys, where the money's been flowing, right? So it's coming from KRW, BTC. Very interesting right there. So XRP is the number one for money going into the last day. That's bullish as anything, guys. Now, let's go to Twitter because there is an interview I want to play you guys with Stuart Alderotti. It is quite a long interview. I'm going to sort of fast track it anyway. Let's have a listen to them. Regulatory uncertainties create havoc in marketplaces. We need clarity. Listen to this bullish dude here representing Ripple in the case, all right? Listen to this. Now, Stu, we were talking earlier about the fact that you recently wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal questioning the SEC's approach to the crypto market for not providing sufficient clarity over crypto regulation. Can you elaborate on that a bit and explain why you believe the current crypto regulatory approach actually does more harm than good? Yeah. So, um, that since... December of 2020, and that's an important day because the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple in December 2020, uh, we have not signed a single U.S. customer to our platform, but in the past two years, we've had the strongest years ever as a company. That $10 billion in volume mostly is driven offshore, and by the way, this is all done compliant with anti-money laundering laws. Um, OFAC laws, anti-sanction laws, et cetera. Why is that? Why haven't we signed a single U.S. customer in the past two years? Because of regulatory uncertainty and really regulatory hostility. So the uh, piece that I wrote in the Wall Street Journal was in response to an op-ed that our current chair of the SEC wrote, Gary Gensler, where he announced that the SEC was going to be the cop on the beat for crypto. Well, I don't remember anyone holding an election for the cop on the beat for crypto. I don't remember Congress appointing Gary Gensler as the cop on the beat for crypto. So I wrote an editorial basically saying you can't self-anoint your you can't self-appoint yourself as the cop on a beat for crypto. And what really is happening here in the US, because we have such regulatory uncertainty and outright regulatory hostility through what we call regulation by enforcement, compared to sophisticated economic centers like Singapore like London, like Dubai. Um, what we're doing here in the US, and I think principally through the SEC as an institution, is we're elevating politics and power over sound policy. And in doing that, you're not only hurting innovation and innovators and entrepreneurs like Ripple, and I won't name others, but there's others under attack and, uh, in the space in the US, that ultimately you're hurting the retail holder of this asset. One in five Americans have either hold, own, or have interacted with crypto. And that uncertainty ultimately hurts them. So when you hear the chair of the SEC saying, I'm doing this all in the name of consumer protection, actually it's the very opposite. It's the consumer that's getting hurt. The day the SEC sued Ripple, um, the digital asset that we rely upon to effectuate the cross-border transactions, XRP, was delisted or suspended from trading from nearly every U.S. platform in the U.S. and $15 billion in market cap volume was erased. Did Ripple get hurt? Our business moved offshore. Who got hurt? The men and women who owned XRP in the U.S., who've been locked out of their accounts and can't access XRP in the U.S. If I could just give one more example. In Gary Gensler's editorial, he talked about a settlement with BlockFi, a lending platform, and what a great success that was. What happened? They settled with BlockFi, and they said, if you want to be a lending platform, you have to come in and register with the SEC. For those who are paying attention, we kind of all knew there was no path to registration with the SEC uh, because the regulatory framework wasn't there. And the, uh, the SEC assessed a $100 million fine. Shortly thereafter, BlockFi was not able to make the first $10 million down payment on the $100 million fine. They went on the auction block. They were sold. Two other companies with similar business models quickly went bankrupt. And the consumers who had funds on those platforms were left holding the bag in bankruptcy court. That does, at the end, so that was the, the response in the Wall Street Journal to what Gary Gensler basically calling him out, saying, 
Stop invoking consumer protection. Stop invoking integrity of the markets. You're hurting the consumer. Regulatory uncertain uncertainty creates havoc in the marketplace. What we need is clarity. So talk about that a little bit. What a legend. All right. What a legend. I'm sorry that went for a bit long, but guys, that needed to be played. All right. Because, I mean, Elderotti is doing a, a very good job here with this Ripple lawsuit. And I'm glad he called out Gensler, the lizard man for power tripping, gone mad with power. He's overstepping his uh, jurisdictional, jurisdictional power, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, bullish anything, guys. I can't wait for, for a Ripple to destroy the SEC. That's just my uh, personal view. Anyway, strategy buys, you know, an extra 301 Bitcoin here, guys. Michael Saylor's gone mad with that. Colorado in the United States now accepts Bitcoin through PayPal for tax payments. Um, again, it's very interesting that governments are accepting tax in the form of Bitcoin. Why would they be doing that? Because they know it's going to go up in value. They're not stupid. All right. Facts. Binance US announces it will support the Cardano Vassal upgrade and hard fork. Keep an eye on that, guys. That is happening tomorrow in Australia. Actually, no. What day is it today? It is uh, Wednesday today. So it'll be Thursday sorry, Friday in Australia, I believe, anyway, when that happens. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Cardano. Ripple, again, bullish moves, guys. When it comes to the climate crisis, crypto must do its part to help us build more sustainable future. Yesterday, we signed the climate pledge and have joined 375 businesses that are prioritizing the planet going to become carbon neutral. We know this. We just watched Alderati right here, guys. Marco Strategy just bought $6 million in Bitcoin. Crypto.com announces it will support the tax burn for Luna C Classic on the Classic Network, guys. Luna Classic, it might go back up, guys. All right, just saying. Crypto market is 13 years old. The stock market is 491 years old. For those of you who don't know, that is insane. Thank you, Altcoin Daily. And again, some other things right here, guys. A security is something that represents ownership in a company. It gives you rights to dividends, gives you rights to governance. Things like that XRP, it obviously, if XRP is a security, it's a security of what? XRP is not a security. Facts right there. Now, let's go to the coin market cap right here. $920 billion in volume, total market cap. Obviously, for everything, guys, $69 billion in the last 24 hours. It is down today. 39% BTC, 17% uh, Ethereum, 21,000 cryptocurrencies, 99% of, of which are going to be absolutely useless. We know this. And again, where my money's going right now, and I keep telling everyone every single day, this is where my money's going. Ethereum, yes, I did put $1,000 into that. XRP, Cardano, XLM, Algorand, Hedera, Quant, IOTA, XDC, and Alliance Block. Also, I just want to make a point as well, just to end up on this video. I get so many comments about how much XRP I should hold. You know, what are you holding? First and foremost, I'll never disclose how many I'm holding because for security reasons, no one should ever do that. Never tell anybody how much cryptocurrency you're holding. It's very risky. If that thing goes to 10 to $20 million one day, you don't want anyone knowing that you're holding that, all right? So please do not disclose how much you're holding. Just say you hold the crypto. I hold XRP. How much? None of your business, all right? Also, with regards to those people who ask me how much you should hold, if you're back to this end of the video, thank you very much. But guys, it's completely up to you. It's not financial advice. Whatever you can afford, so long as you're in the game, that's all that matters, all right? That's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Thank you very much for sticking around. Make sure you follow me on the all the social medias down below. Links are all below, official links. And make sure you check the spelling if you're searching for me on social media as well, because guys, there's a lot of fake spam accounts as well. Stay safe. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Talk in the comments and the community tab, all right? Peace out. Bye.